Hi folks, thanks for joining me for another lockdown fly. Uh, I've got quite a bit of time on my hands as you've probably gathered, so I've tied another one for today. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 12 and it's in black nickel and it's a medium wire hook. The thread I'm going to be using today is the uh, uni thread. It's a yellow and it's at 6.0. So first thing to do then is get some wax onto your thread. And I want to catch in just in behind the eye and then run a layer of thread up the shank of the hook and I'm going to stop that one just to where a barb would appear on a barbed hook. I can take away my waist. Okay, next I'm going to add in some uh, Vivas Pearl. It's a medium, it's a P01 and it's just a clear pearl Lurex. Now I did have a little bit picked out and here it is and I just want to catch that two wraps and then I can bring my thread up out the way. Now what I'm going to do with this pearl Lurex is just create a tag just at the bend of the hook. You can use different coloured floss or thread if you wish uh, just to create a little bit of a hot spot in the butt end. So now I've done that, I can bring my thread back and ca catch in my waist. Don't worry about the uh, the mess here, it's all going to get covered up in due course. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add my tailing fibres and I'm just using uh, some bronze mallard here. I haven't got particularly good feathers left for doing dabblers, so I use these feathers for things like tailing. So I'm going to just pull off just over a dozen feathers, bring them out at a 90 degree angle and marry the tips up, then I can just rip that away. So I'm just going to dress that up, and I want it to protrude approximately a centimetre and a half past the bend of the hook. So I've got that caught in and I'm just going to bring my thread all the way to the back end of the fly. So I've just stopped the thread where the hook would norm uh, the barb would be on a hook. Remove the waist and then for the rib of this fly I'm using some gold wire. This is fine wire, it's from Danville's. And as you can see, it's a gold wire. I've already got a little bit picked out here. And I'm going to capture that in next. So the March Brown uh, it needs no introduction really from me. And this certainly, although loosely based on a March Brown, probably doesn't uh, look like any March Brown you've seen before. So for the body, I'm using some of the Andrew Scruffy Dubbin. Uh, this is the natural boosted. And I'm just going to dub that on. Not overly tight, but tight enough as to give me a good coverage for the body. Because what I want to do with this, is once I've brought my rib over, I really want to brush it out and get them fibres out and brushed back to give it that shaggy look. We'll just bring that over and I'm just keeping the body slightly tapered towards the front and before I do anything else I'm just going to get a little bit more wax on my thread then my dubbing went this way so I'm going to come in the opposite direction with my rib uh, I'm not bothered whether the rib stands out or not uh, because basically it's going to be hidden when I brush out all that, all them nice fibres. And the thing with the, the natural boosted uh, scruffy dubbing 
is, is it does have a lot of different colours in there. So I'm just going to remove my wire rib. Then next, I'm going to come in with my trusty dubbing brush. It's just a, a little bit of Velcro on here. And I'm really going to work that quite hard to, to get all these fibres out to play. I want it to be really bushy. So I'm coming in underneath just getting all the fibres out. Now I don't know how well you'll be able to, how well the camera will pick up this but uh, I'm releasing purples and reds and oranges and it just looks the business. Really effective uh, dubbing. So I'll just straggle all that out. Of course the other way you can do this is you can create a dubbing loop or you know, you could split your thread if you use the different thread. You can't split uni thread, obviously. But that's just about the look I was after. So next, I'm going to add in my throat hackle. Now, some people um, would put a false hackle in on their match, their wet match browns. I'm going to tie in a full hackle. So I've got myself a a little bit of partridge feather off my cape here. And I've picked a picked a feather from the bottom of the cape. It's got nice nice mottled markings on it. And what I want to do with that is catch in the tip with uh, my hackle pliers. I'm going to pull all that back. Then I'm going to capture that in just where the body ends. So a couple of turns that way. Then I can come in with my snips and remove my waist. Then I can use this as a handle uh, or I like to just get my hackle pliers on the end. I just think you've got a little bit more control doing this. And I only want just a turn and a half maybe then I can come over and trap in my waist end so I'll just pull all that back now and remove the waist so, so far so good there's, uh, you might notice I've not left as much room as I'd like at the front here, considering I've still got a tie in the wing. So what I'm going to do is create some space for my wing to come in. Just adding a little bit more wax to the thread. With, the, with these type of flies, you can't uh, really have enough wax on your thread. It really does help. So I brought that back. That's all looking pretty good. And next, what I'm going to do is I've got this old hen hen feather here. Now, generally, if I was putting in wings and I was tying a fly that was going to be photographed and, and one for Facebook, I, asked, I answered a question on Facebook on my Sunday live question feed. And the question was, do flies on social media catch more anglers than they do fish? And... Uh, uh, well, if, you, if you're interested, you can go and have a look at that. I'll uh, stick a little info bar up in the corner here and you can have a look. But um, it was a good question. But for flies that are going right in my fishing box, which this one is, so I'm just going to use this one feather and take a slip from this side. Just putting it down to the side and I'm going to take a slip from the other side. Now this is a, a pretty poor um, hen pheasant feather, but you know I don't like to waste anything, so I'm going to use it. All these, um, you know, these flies that you see on Facebook are, are beautifully well tied, and uh, I love looking at them. They're, they're, they really are fantastic, but for the majority, you know, once the, once they're start fished. They're not, um, 
the wings aren't going to stay as beautiful as they look in the photographs make no mistake so I'm going to just uh, use these poor man's hen feathers and tie a fishing fly today so I've got it here and what I want is the wing to come not quite as long as the tail but not far off it so I'm going to show that up to the hook catch it in with my thumb and forefinger in my left hand get a loop over and I know that's gone poorly so I'm going to just try and correct it before I clamp down and then there's my wing it's quite a light wing and all I'm going to do is come in and take away my waist now the reason I'm using this yellow uni thread here is when it's wet it goes a lovely shade of olive so although it looks yellow to the camera now once it's finished it does come out olive so I've cut that in I'm going to grab my whip finisher and get that finished up now you can uh, if you wish use head cement varnish I'm going to use a touch of UV resin just to finish the fly off like so I'll just cure that off now now this might not be the uh, the prettiest March Brown imitation you've seen tied today but I can pretty much assure you that it will catch fish so once you've cured that off just to finish it then you can come in with your brush don't be worrying about the wing as I said before they all look nice when they're uh, on the camera but as soon as you start fishing with these the wings regardless of how nice they've been tied will um, split away like, like this one has so the quality of the feather you get uh, it doesn't really matter so I've just used this old feather and I've still managed to achieve the effect I'm after for a fishing fly I wouldn't be entering into any fly tying competitions but that's not the point I hope you enjoyed that if you haven't subscribed to the channel please think about doing so now and I'll see you all next time